Then in the meantime, I'm ready on sledge. This is case number. One four five five six zero 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 two. The people of the state of Michigan versus Micah Denard Sledge. The defendant is charged with one count of retail fraud. Today is the date set for review. Appearances, please. Austin Gregory, PA five one nine three. On behalf of <clears throat> Mr. Sledge, who's present by Zoom, uh, Mr. Sledge, please unmute and state your full name for the record. Micah Denard Sledge. Thank you, sir. Today is the date set for review. With respect to Mr. Sledge. Um, he was placed on a delayed sentence February of this year, and he was supposed to complete, um, he was ordered to complete a drug test where he tested positive for marijuana without a, med a medical marijuana card. He attended theft awareness and he paid his court balance. He has eight hours of community service and he's gonna submit to another uh, drug test. Mr. Gregory. Uh, Your Honor, um, I apologize. Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Sledge um, has is just asking for 30 days to complete his community service uh, requirements. So he may be, uh, his eight hours of community service, so he may be in compliance with the court orders. But he's not- And he will, uh, and well, he will test. So, but is he smoking weed? Uh, currently, no. Yeah. Is he smoking weed? <laughs> so we if, have if talked to him about the need if to I comply order, with court orders. If I order Mr. Sledge to come down to the court and test today, is he going to test positive for marijuana? Uh, Might as well be honest, Mr. Mr. Sledge or whatever. Are you going to test positive for marijuana? Your Honor, you're asking me? Yeah, anybody. Uh, I want to answer yeah. somebody. Yeah, I, I would definitely test positive. So why are you smoking weed without a valid medical marijuana card if I ordered you to not smoke without a valid medical marijuana card? Um, I mean, I, I just didn't know I needed a medical marijuana card with it being wrecked in Michigan. I apologize. So are you saying you didn't hear me say it or you felt like notwithstanding no. the fact that I said it, you decided you didn't need it because it's legal in Michigan? No, I'm... I, I didn't, I didn't. I honestly didn't hear you say it. I did go to do the um, drug test and all of that, but I definitely didn't understand that you said I couldn't uh, smoke without a medical marijuana card. Mr. Flanagan, what did I order? Did I order that? First file, Your Honor, Sledge. Yeah, shall not use or possess any marijuana without a valid medical marijuana card. Yeah, I knew I said, I, thought I said it. I knew I said it. I knew I said it. So let's be clear about something. It's legal in the state of Michigan to leave your house whenever you feel like it. But if I say you got to be home by 10 o'clock as a condition of your probation, then you got to be home at 10 o'clock. It's legal in the state of Michigan to drink alcohol to your heart's content. But if I say no drinking while you're on probation, then it's no drinking. So you've clearly decided, or you said you didn't hear me. But one thing I pride myself on is being clear and articulate when I give my probation orders. That's one thing I know. I know that I said that. I know that I was clear about it. I know that my words came out in a way that you could hear me and understand me. So what I'm saying to you is this. You're going to stop smoking weed and then you're going to come in for a drug test on the day of your next review and if that drug test is positive then we're going to we're going to assume that you have a problem that you're addicted to the marijuana that you also freely say is not addicting we're going to assume that if you cannot stop smoking weed today that you, you have a problem with a substance 
that that, that the people tell me is not addicting when we don't know that it is. Just like alcohol is addicting. Just like somebody could be addicted to alcohol. Just like somebody could be addicted to Tylenol. So we're going to send Mr. We're going to continue the probation. He is going to complete the eight hours of community service. And he is going to submit to your analysis. Now, what we're going to do is he's going to come in by the close of business Friday. He's going to come in by the close of business Friday. And he's going to submit to your analysis. I know that it's going to be positive. Already know that that's going to be positive. He has to submit to your analysis at 36 district court by Friday. That's going to cost him $10. And then on his review date, he's going to submit to your analysis again. If that drug test is not substantially lower or, or has disappeared, then we're going to have an issue. We're going to have an issue. Um, So I'm going to set his review for an in-person review so that he can test on the day of his review. How many do I have on Friday, September the 22nd? Just four. Cases or reviews? Oh, four cases. Okay. okay. That sounds like a good day to take a vacation. <laughs> Nevertheless, I won't. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to set his review for Friday, September 22nd at 9.02. That means in person. September 22nd at 9.02. And then when he comes in, Mr. Flanagan, we're going to make a note on the file that he is to be sent to the lab for your analysis. Okay. Anything further? Nothing further, Your Honor. May I ask a question? You might want to ask your lawyer in the breakout room before we go on the record with it. I can go back to breakout with Mr. Sledge now. Okay. Uh, I'm going to send them to number three. Okay. I hope I've got this one right here first. This is the People versus Micaiah Phelps. Hello, how you doing? Hi, sir. Give me just one second for your counsel to get up here, okay? Okay. Um, Morning, Your Honor. I'm sorry. No, you go. Sorry. Morning, Your Honor. Jeffrey Tanth on behalf of Mr. Phelps. We wait for a reading and stand mute. All right. I'll enter a not guilty plea on your client's behalf. I've signed a request for a court. Oh, no. Um, oh, oh, no. I would not like to plead not guilty. No, no, no. You're pleading it, not guilty. Believe me. Sir, I don't it's just that. your arraignment. It's your arraignment. It's not, you're going to have a pretrial date. I want you to talk to your attorney. Don't just plead guilty on the record like that. Talk to your lawyer, okay? Okay. Okay. And, uh, obviously, he's a peer judge um, and uh, would ask for a, a personal bond this way. All right. Yes, it's, if he's not been printed, he needs to be printed. And I've signed the order. Yeah, I don't see any prior criminal history. Okay. Um, Officer Schillingberg, or what are you here on, sir? Simmons at 9 30. Oh, okay. Then just give us a second. I just want to make sure it wasn't this. All right. Um, bond conditions. Sir, you're to appear in court as directed. You're not to leave the state without permission of the court. You're not to commit any new crimes while released. You're to immediately notify the court of change of address or phone number, and you cannot uh, operate a motor vehicle without a valid license. Do you understand all of that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you're going to have a $1,000 personal bond, okay? Okay. 
All right, Mr. Phelps, you'll get your next court date in the mail. We've got a good address for you on Reno. Yes, ma'am. All right, you're all set, sir. I'm sorry, did you give the PCC on the preliminary exam? Oh, date? I'm sorry. Thank you. Sir. Yes. You have a right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing can and will be used against you. You have the right to a lawyer and that attorney will be present at any, you have a right to have him present at any future questioning and any future court hearings. If you can't afford an attorney, an attorney will be appointed for you. You have two dates within the next 21 days. The first is your probable cause conference and that is set for August 7th, 2023. You can appear at that, so a week from today. You can appear at that via Zoom. The date following that will be your preliminary exam. At that hearing, the prosecutor must prove that a crime was committed and probable cause exists that you committed that crime. And that date is in person at the 23rd District Court on August 14th of 2023. Okay, Mr. Phelps? Okay. All right, you're all set, sir. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Hello? Hi, detective, we meet again. Yeah. Um, can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you, God? I do. All right. And can you state your name for the record? Detective Jordan Chamberlain. And did you read the type complaint that was filed with the court? I did. Is it accurate to the best of your knowledge and belief? It is. Can you state the facts that support the issuance of the arrest warrant? Yes, ma'am. On 7 28 23, Taylor officers were dispatched to 12521 Pine in the city of Taylor for a domestic incident. Upon arrival, officers talked to the victim, Alan Cole. Cole stated he was texting his mistress, Dar Darina Dupree. Dupree then stated she was coming over to his home. Dupree arrived at the location and sent a picture of Cole's vehicle outside. Cole then looked outside of his window and observed Dupree attempting to puncture his tires. Cole then exited his home and confronted Dupree in the front lawn. Dupree then walked past, past Cole and walked inside the home through the closed front door without permission. Cole then pulled Dupree outside the home by her shirt. Dupree then placed her hands on the front window, which caused the window to shatter. Dupree then grew a piece of glass and held it by her side and threatened to cut Cole with it. Cole's wife then called police. Dupree attempted to flee the scene. However, Dupree was shortly after arrested on scene. Okay. Um, did you sign the complaint before you sent it over to the court? I did. All right. Let the record indicate that I find probable cause to believe that the accused committed the alleged offense, and I will therefore issue the warrant, and we'll get it right back over to you. All right. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Thank you. This is file 221583. It's in the name of Mystique Dawn Pressler. Mystique, do you prefer Pressler or Condi? Condi. All right, Mystique Dawn Condi. Uh, we had a hearing yesterday regarding your bond that frankly should not have even have been set. Uh, you posted a bond to the bonding company, didn't show up. We were forfeiting your bond and and we realized you'd been in jail for 11 days, and I should have probably yeah. seen you 11 days ago. Uh, with us also is Ms. Matea Paycheck from the Public Defender Office. Okay. Let's go back to the beginning. On June 19th of 2022, you were charged with, or you're accused of having a retail fraud at the Goodwill store in Three Rivers as a second offense that's punishable by up to a year in jail um you were arrested in april of 23 april 9th and on april 16th you bonded out so you had seven days credit then it was set for further proceedings including a pretrial, and you didn't show up 
So a bench warrant issued for your arrest and you got arrested eight, 11 days ago. So you've Judge been Matt, in jail. Yes, you've been I've in been jail. Running, until, I've been running from these drugs and this, this stuff for my whole life. I, I, need, a, I need a break. I can't take it no well, more. I'm going to die. I, I checked with the circuit court and you've got the felony cases pending and they're doing an assessment for adult drug treatment court, which is just what you need yeah. because of the drugs. You've been stealing all the time and they've been chasing you and you've been struggling. So no let's talk about this case. You've also mm -hmm. got several other cases pending and your bond has been canceled in circuit court pending a possible treatment in a placement in the treatment court. It's it's doing it's it's possible treatment. Is that what it said? Is that what you said? Yeah, they're doing an assessment okay. to see okay. whether you're appropriate. Well, I'm not in charge of it, but I'm looking at you're appropriate. Yeah. All right. This is an old retail fraud from Goodwill. You've been in jail for 18 days. You've also got several other cases that I think I can wipe out by uh dealing with them here today at any rate the allegation is that on or about june 19th you and a co-defendant steal some stole some stuff from the goodwill store in three rivers they charge it as a second offense making it punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to a thousand dollars i am representing to you that if you plead to this charge i will give you 18 days in jail credit 18 days and let you get prepared for your felony cases in circuit court. I'm also okay, gonna sir. wipe out some of your other cases that you haven't paid on over the years. Okay. Uh, do you understand? Yes. Are you willing to plead guilty to this charge? Yes. Other than what I just told you, did anybody promise you anything to get you to plead to this? No. Or threaten you? No. Now, your original attorney was Paul Gibson. He's not available this morning, so the public defender's office is with us, and she's heard everything we just said. Do you understand, Dawn, that if you plead, or Mystique, that if you plead to this, you'll be giving up your opportunity to have a trial. There will be no trial. Do you understand that? Yes. If you had a trial, you'd have a right to have any of the witnesses for or against you subpoenaed to come to court, so you could be questioned under oath. They could be questioned under oath. You would also have the right to take the witness stand and testify in your own behalf, but you don't have to because you have a right not to testify. And if you did not wish to testify, the judge or jury could not hold your silence against you. And you have the right to be presumed innocent if and until the state was able to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Understand? Yes. Yes. Now, according to the affidavit, you and another girl who I won't mention, who I also know, were at the Goodwill store on June 19th of last year, 2022. Is that correct? I remember. I remember. And you put some stuff in a bag and went out the door without paying for it? Yep. All yes. All right. All right. Well, let's take care of this. Um, have you had your assessment yet? No, I haven't. Or it's coming. All right. I need to take care of all these charges first. Well, we're going to do some of that right now. Okay. I'm just now you did to see seven that. days at the front end and you bonded out, then you went AWOL, then you got picked up 11 days ago. So that's 18 days credit, 18 days. I'm going to waive your fines and costs because you can't, you know, a bunch of other stuff. So. You're also barred from goodwill for one year. Are you struggling with opioids or meth? Opioids had been heroin, your struggle. Heroin, 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 heroin. I got to get heroin, heroin or, or yeah, fentanyl. Heroin, or, 
I mean, both, but but heroin is is the worst. Is the worst. Is the worst. But I need I treat, need, need treatment for it all. I need treatment for it all. Um, I right now today's the fourth day I've actually been able to see like light, like see light right now. I mean, it's been bad. Well, you've been in jail for eleven days. So have you been going through detox? Bad, bad. All right. Well, so you're seeing pretty with it this morning. Um, yeah. You're understanding everything we're talking about. Yes. All right. I'm going to wipe out some other cases. File 19160. Thank you're you, on a payment plan where you never made any payment. Um, I'm going to order. That's a retail fraud. Fail to pay 11 days credit, 11 days concurrent with all other cases. Thank you, Mr. Madison. I'm going to wipe out everything. I put you on those payment plans and you just, you were struggling so much. You never, you were just trying to get from one day to the next. Yeah. But You know enough people that have overdosed. I don't want you to be one of them. File 211520T is a driving suspended. Fail to pay fines and costs, 11 days credit, 11 days. Concurrent with all other cases. Thank you, Mr. Melton. File 211530N, possession of paraphernalia. How did you get arrested 11 days ago? Um, I was with, uh, I was at the grocery store and um, I just bought like, I don't know, hundred dollars in groceries. And um, the, the person that I was with refused to stop. All right, so you're still hanging around with all the wrong people. Yeah, yep, yes I am. 11 days credit, and you knew there were warrants out, 11 days credit, 11 days on that paraphernalia charge concurrent yes, with all other cases. And then there's one more, an open intox case from state statute, 21153. I so think after these this are takes care, care of all four cases that you had fines on, plus this one. So I think it takes care of all five open district court cases you have. Okay. You have two cases in circuit court, and uh, your bond by your own request was canceled. Yeah. So you're not going to go anywhere, but uh, that does take care of everything you had down here. It's one day at a time, and yeah. you've had just had 11 clean, rough days. They yeah. start to get better from here. Um, and God. we'll see what they decide to do regarding adult drug, drug treatment court. But that thank takes care of everything you have down here. Okay, thank you. All right, good luck to you, Ms. Conner. Thank you, Jeff. All right, bye. All right, Matea, thanks for your help. Uh, we did manage to take care of a lot of old baggage there. Of course, not a problem. Have a great day. Thank you. All right, uh, that girl I've known for <coughs> since she was 17. She's right. All right, that's it, I believe, for today. We'll be back in the morning with arraignments and some other things. 
unless I get another bench warrant or something. So thank you all for saying good morning. Everybody have a good day. And I'll be a little better tomorrow.